clock, I go back to bat when I'm doing numbers. All the Today, from FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland, it's week four of the NFL on EA Sports. just north of 80,000 and they have come out in very good numbers today at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. They love their football in this part of the country and this crowd is ready to go as their guys will match up with the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn. And Charles, we look at this Washington team as they interplay here. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. So here come the Ravens with their first look on offense. Leading them out, the reigning MVP of the National Football League in his third season now from Louisville, it's Lamar Jackson. Partner, you know how guys always tell us it's not about the numbers, it's about the win. It's about the numbers, too. Almost 400 yards passing by him last week. What can he do in this one? <laughs> well, earned an AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Maybe he'll try to get 400-plus here and duplicate that honor again. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. A look there at Ingram's numbers from a week ago. 13 carries, 63 yards. Well, he's the number two runner in the league, and you just know the offensive line wants to get him to number one because most of the good ball carriers, they take care of their linemen. Could be a gold watch in their future if he becomes a leading rusher. On second down now. It's Ingram, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? So a look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. And they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. On is the punter, Cook, who sends it away. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. So out comes the Washington offense onto the field. And they'll be led out by a man making a remarkable return to the football field. It is Alex Smith. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice, the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. Open man, Taylor Gabriel. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. He's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. 
The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. Here's the Pro Bowl punter, Tress Way, on to punt for Washington as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. And it's taken in at the nine. A nice return there of 11 to help mitigate a good punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. Try to get it to Willie Sneed there, and now it's second down. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game, but this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. Second and ten. Here's Jackson again. Forced out to his left. He's going to take off with it. The quick feet by Jackson. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. He's, I mean, what more can you say about Lamar Jackson? We know that he's got the quickness and the agility, but, you know, if you wanted proof of his straight line speed, look no further. And normally when you see guys move it this fast, it might be a fly pattern from a receiver or a toss sweep from a tailback or something like that. This was designed as a passing play, and then he got out of the pocket, and he just took off, and he just kept gaining momentum with every step. Jackson on first down. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Jackson. Barney, you know when we call a game, we talk. And he cannot avoid the pressure as the Washington pass rush gets home. The DN Jonathan Allen making sure his presence is felt. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Another try after the first down sack. Jackson. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. I think maybe that Tucker will be in gone. Makes defense is a lot bolder. Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm is going forward. Incomplete pass. Looking downfield for Dez. And that is incomplete. Brandon, we saw these defenders fly into the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Now Washington going to retake the field for drive number two. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. 
And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. This is Gabriel out on the left side. Yeah, he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. That one, a first down pickup of eight. First down 10 at the 42-yard line. A carry now for McKissick. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. We're scoreless after one. With no score. Second quarter now from our nation's capital, and it's Washington in possession of the football as they've got a second and eight forthcoming. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. Able to corral him right at the midfield stripe following that sparkling display of footwork we saw. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Makes it third and two. Now a give right side. It's Gibson, and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively, and it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted, spotted at the 14-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. Jackson fakes the give and keeps it. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 12-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This defense is really thrown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Second and 12, Jackson stepping up. He's going to keep it, and he works it across the 25 before being tackled. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Caught by Snead over the middle. And he'll be taken down, Do but it. not before they Do work it. it across midfield. A good pick up there, 26 yards. It's worth noting when you talk about Jackson's running ability, the Baltimore wide receivers had just over 1,400 receiving yards combined last year. And Charles, that was the fewest yards by a wide receiver group in the NFL since 2011. And partner, I expect that number to go up this year. Last season, Lamar Jackson got very comfortable with his tight end group. In fact, he had one tight end and went to the Pro Bowl. But I think now, because of his ability to run the ball, it'll bring defenders closer to the line of scrimmage, and you'll see more big plays from the wide receivers down the field. And that will be caught, but out of the end zone, says the field judge. It's ruled incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. And you know he wants to make the most of every carry because he competes with his quarterback, Lamar Jackson, four carries and yardage. But Mark Ingram, over 1,000 yards last season. And then the Ravens went out and drafted J.K. Dobbins out of Ohio State in the second round. So now the Ravens potentially have two guys to pair with Lamar Jackson in the run game. Wishbone formation, anyone?
From the two, here's first and goal. They'll look to run with Ingram. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. It's a game of a yard. Brings up second and goal. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. you that coming up at halftime will join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores. And he'll get in. He's over on, for the touchdown. Lamar Jackson hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season as his guys are first out of the scoreboard here this afternoon. Well, that was all Lamar Jackson all the time on that drive, both through the air and in the end with the touchdown run. Yeah, how about him doing things a little bit on the reverse side there, Brandon, because he softened him up throwing the football and opened up the running lanes. And when he gets a little bit of a sliver, he's gone. And that's exactly what he did there. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. Justin Tucker to kick off for Baltimore. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. 25 yard line. Smith. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Offense. That's not good enough, man. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. Out of the gun, Smith. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. From the gun, here's Smith. Slings this deep from McClellan. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Marcus Peters on the coverage. Here's McKissick. And a short gain across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Tressway now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Returnable here from the 38. They'll net only 35 here following a 43-yard boot, 8-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Mark Ingram now gears up to help lead this offense back out there. First month of the season, those numbers pretty solid. Does he continue that? I think so, because when you come out of the gate this strong, that means that you have planned for it and you like the results that you're getting. So I wouldn't have any doubt that the head coach, offensive coordinator, actually called in, the, it called him in and said, look, you're our guy, okay? We're gonna continue to stick with this as long as we're winning games. And this is gonna be intercepted. Picked off by Ronald Darby. shaking his head right after he threw that pass. Uh, what did you see? Well, from a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, 
you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big time play by you or an overthrow by the quarterback, you have a much better opportunity. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there, 21 yards. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. To try again after the sack. Smith, looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Uh, he's trying to protect his quarterback's blind side. Got nabbed for the hold. You have one job over there. Make sure that man does not get hit. So if you have to hold occasionally, do so because they don't catch all of them. This time they did. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing on third down, Smith. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. You're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range. Yeah, you got the leak. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. After the sack on first down, Jackson. He's got a man complete. And all the way down to the 42. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. He uncorks it for Sneed. And in the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Willie Sneed as the first half is winding down and the Ravens will extend their lead. Well, fair to say that when you're looking at guys that can run like the wind, you often find them at the wide receiver position, and that was special there. Well, in this league where coordinators worry so much about drawing up the right routes, blocking assignments, misdirections and stuff, they have these precise arrows and movements. Sometimes the best plays just come from the schoolyard where you look at your fastest guy and say, go long, go get it, big man. Tucker now to add the point after. And it's good to make it 14-0. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Justin Tucker to kick off for Baltimore. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. Now we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary, playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only going to fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not going to be out of position. Take the knee, get to the... And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. So we come upon halftime with our score 14 to nothing. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, time for a trip around the league on this final weekend of September.
Well, we get our tour out at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, and it's the Steelers who are out in front. Ben Roethlisberger has thrown a couple of touchdown passes. From there, we head down south to Tampa to check on the Bucks at home at Raymond James Stadium. And it's the visiting LA Chargers who are out in front. Austin Eckler, two touchdown runs on the afternoon. Lastly, let's head to Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. See what's happening with the Bengals. And they trail in that one as it's the visiting Jags who are out in front. Gardner Minshew has thrown a touchdown pass. In the game you're watching, we've seen a strong first half out of Lamar Jackson. His guys have a two touchdown lead as we hand it back over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Justin Tucker to kick off for Baltimore. Washington down on the scoreboard, but they are getting the football first here, and we are back underway on EA Sports. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Now here's Inman bringing in the pass. And they're able to get this one across the 35. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. They will run it. It's McKissick. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Oh, it's out. Smith lost it. And the Ravens have got it. On the keeper. Fumble on the play. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B, one starts with an S, ball security. And they preach it. They, they have it up in, in the meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. They had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try to cut down the length of the drive. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. On second and 11 now. Jackson looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Ingram. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. Got that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch, I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. From midfield now, here's Jackson. He gets it to Brown, good play. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ball game now, and he's got a first down. You know, Lamar Jackson last season, the first NFL quarterback with 3,000 or more passing yards and 1,000 or more rushing yards in the same season. And we've seen both of those talents on display here today. We just saw another completed pass. And everyone knew coming out of college he could run the ball. But for some reason, we didn't analyze it throwing the way we should have. I think every time he completes a pass, he says to himself, take that, evaluators. You guys really missed the boat on me. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. 
That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Yeah, boy, a good surge defensively. I it'll can't depend hear on the mark, but I'm not sure he got there. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This will be a critical call. They're running. Hingle. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. A year ago, Lamar Jackson led the league in touchdown passes with 36. And many of those went to his tight end, Mark Andrews, who went to the Pro Bowl in his second season in the league. He led all tight ends with 10 receiving touchdowns in 2019. Many people argue that he's Jackson's go-to guy. I say there's no doubt that that is his main target, and he goes to him again for a touchdown connection. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 21 to zip. Justin Tucker to kick off. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Uh, they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. Smith. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. On second and nine, Smith looking for Inman deep. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, Keep advancing the ball down the field. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Come on, guys, let's go! I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. They're going on fourth down. It's Jackson. He's going deep for... This is caught inside the 15. And all on, the way down. in for a Ravens touchdown. Hollywood, Marquise Brown. His fifth touchdown now on the year. As the Ravens push further out in front. 
This is something that we saw quite a bit at Oklahoma, and we'll be seeing it more and more on the NFL level as well. Marquise Brown going Hollywood. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards. So just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And if you want the final metric on his top speed, and trust me, you do, Next Gen Stat says he hit 22.4 miles an hour. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28-0 now. A drive there of just four plays, and it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Justin Tucker to kick off for Baltimore. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This will make it into the end zone. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Now we get another look at Washington on offense. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. You got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A shotgun snap for Smith. To the right side and complete to Thomas. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. Operating from the gun. Smith firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. They'll contain him to just four, second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And that's incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it. And this is caught, and he takes it in. Touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin, his second touchdown on the season. And Washington able to close the gap just a bit. Well, he's been doing this for a lot of years with the arm strength still there, and he showed it off on that one. And give him credit, he deserves it. But this is such a breakdown defensively, my goodness. From a pass rush perspective, you know that they got to be coming hard on fourth down trying to get to the quarterback. But from a coverage perspective, how do you not see that play developing? And it turns into a touchdown. And you can see in the next-gen stats, that one 62 yards in the air. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. He's got it to bring it back to 28-7 now. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was polished off by Washington touchdown. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. 
And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson. He's had one of those games that any quarterback loves, not only being able to complete some passes, but some deep passes. And it's pretty to watch. I mean, it's an absolute joy to see, but let's face it, we got to give a little bit of credit where it's deserved, right? Well, the protection's been great the if that's where you're been, going. The protection's been phenomenal, but how about how it's been spotlighted, right? Our producer, Christian McLeod, our director, Kyle Burt, the rest of the crew, what they put together with these images and pictures, if you're an offensive lineman, that's what you're taking with you to contract time. <laughs> They're gonna have a lot to take to contract time if this continues. And he's taken down inside the 30. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. A gain of 16. And we are inside at two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to that feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Ingram again. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this. We know not every run's going to be a big hit. this down to the 18 good enough for a first down it'll be a pickup of just two and it's going to yield a new set of downs we know these runs individually have added up to three plays all three short runs but together a first down yeah it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together take a knee so the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory and it was her defense that really paved the way to this victory as they allowed the one touchdown and that was all she wrote almost want to do the defense chant right now right defense with a couple of claps in there but no one wants to hear that from me let's just talk about how they got it done though when you take care of every aspect of the game shut down the run control the airways right Make sure the quarterback is harassed. This is the type of performance you get. They can't fashion together any offense, no consistency, and they just took control. So for Baltimore, they're on a nice early roll as they move to three and one with a win here. And they'll return home next week to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Meanwhile, for